This is your Baxi 800 connected to the open therm nest. Now what you'll see is a couple of knobs on the front. These knobs don't actually don't actually do anything. Everything is controlled off the nest downstairs. And we've got a pressure gauge here which should be reading between one and two. And if it ever drops below one, you should um, send a message to your heating engineer so they know. And also, you can check the instructions, which will tell you to pull this lever, which is on the right right side under the boiler. Pull the lever down, and the pressure will start to rise. And ideally, it needs to be at around about one and a half, but anywhere between one and two is fine. Now, this boiler. Um, comes with a 10 year warranty in order to satisfy the warranty we have to service this boiler every year the same month as the month of installation so in this case it'll be every January um, if there is an error with the boiler it'll come up in the display and to clear the error we can press the reset button for one second no more no less and now we'll clear the error, but again we need to um, tell the heating engineer about this. Here is your magnetic filter, the MagnaClean, it's under the boiler. And here is the tool for servicing the MagnaClean. Now this needs to be cleaned out once a year on the annual service. It's basically a pot with a strong magnet inside it. And as the water is returning from the radiators to the boiler, it'll spin all the way around the magnet and any magnetic dirt inside the system will be collected by the magnet. We've also got a flushing point fitted to the flow of the boiler for in case the system needs flushing or the boiler needs draining. Underneath your bath we fitted a lever valve. There we go, we fitted a lever valve so if there's ever an emergency this will cut off the water to your shower. So all the water to the shower and all the water to the hot taps will be turned off by turning this lever. This is your NAS thermostat. If you walk past it, it will light up the display and show the weather. And then if you turn the dial, it will show you the current room temperature and what temperature you're asking for, which is also known as the target temperature. If we, whenever we get up in the morning, we can turn the thermostat to the desired temperature and after a number of days it will learn your schedule and it will automatically adjust for you. Now just one, one mention of every half a degree you turn the thermostat down, you are saving yourself probably around about 3% gas per year, so the lower you can keep this the better ideally. Oh, we've got, if we click the ring, we can go into the menus, into the settings. Now if we go into the display, we can, we can change what it's saying when it lights up. We can have, we've got the weather selected, but we can also have it as a clock, either a clock with hands or a digital clock. Also, if we want to change the temperature of the radiators or the hot water, we can just go into the equipment menu. We press continue. And we can change the hot water temperature this way. And we've got it set to 60. Or you can change it up and down to whatever you want. radiators have been fitted with these dynamic radiator valves and lock shield valve. Now we can turn the thermostat side but we never turn the balancing valve because this will upset the balance of the radiators and affect how the house is heating up. This is just used for the plumber to balance the radiators.
on this particular radiator in the hallway we've got the, the drain off so it's a, a nice easy point to drain the heating system and briefly how the thermostatic radiator valve works so each number is representing a room temperature now this valve doesn't doesn't change the temperature of the radiator changes the temperature of the room so the idea is the radiator will be hot until it, the room has reached the temperature you've set on the valve and then the radiator will go off so according to the this cheat sheet here number one you're looking at 12 degrees so at number one the radiator will stay on until the room has reached 12 degrees and the radiator will turn off so hoping to keep the room at 12 degrees and we see number two 16 number three 20 number four 24 and number five is, is marked as 28, but the room will never reach 28, so that, that just means that the radiator will be on all the time. If we want to turn the radiator off, we turn it to the star. We never turn it to the zero, unless we're going to decorate. So the star means that if the room does start to freeze, the radiator will open up to stop any pipes from freezing. Um, as a general guide, number five would be for the hallway in the same area as the thermostat it has to be a number five so that would be the hallway and any wet areas generally number five so the bathroom and the hallway number four it's a nice warm temperature and this tends to be the main living room it would be set at number four possibly the kitchen if you like nice and warm in the kitchen number three bit of a cooler temperature um, People tend to set the bedrooms at number three, so they're quite warm, but they're not um, not very warm, so it's easier to relax when you're going to sleep. Um, number two is if you want the bedroom a bit cooler, and number one is for rooms that are not used very frequently, so it's just giving a little bit of background heat into those rooms. Now these particular um, valves here, dynamic valves, so they're, they're quite new to the market. The most special about these is the self-balancing valves, which makes the room temperature extremely efficient. So on the top, we've got this spindle which we can adjust. So we can adjust the, the flow rate of this radiator. So the radiator has got a constant flow in litres per minute going through the radiator, depending on the size of the radiator and how hot we want the radiator to get. So other valves cannot do this. So what, what we're aiming for here is to make sure every radiator stays at the correct temperature, so there's correct flow and return temperature, so it's giving out the exact correct amount of heat into the room, and this will never change, even if the other TRVs are shutting down. As the rooms come up to temperature, the radiators will stay at a constant flow rate. You've got here your document folder, which contains the service manual for the boiler. It's very important that this is kept safe and it isn't lost because we've got the, the service record in the back and should there be an issue in the first 10 years, Baxi will come out to fix the boiler for free as long as this has been filled out correctly. We've also got the information on the, the radiator valves and the other bits and pieces that we fitted. Well, this system's been set up on what we call open therm with a nest, which means the thermostat's going to help the boiler provider more even heat to the house so the rooms don't fluctuate up and down in temperature and you will have, will have a much more comfortable and more steady room temperature due to the open therm. Because how I, how I traditional how a traditional thermostat would work. Just have a look. So our normal thermostat would, would work. The heating would be on until we reached our target temperature. And as soon as we reach the target temperature, the heating would go off. So for example, if our target is 21, the heating would go on until we got to 21. And then when we got to 21, it would the boiler would turn off, but the radiators would still be hot hot so this 21 would start rising rising until the radiators are cooled then the radiators are cooled down 
the room temperature would start dropping and once the temperature drops below 21 the boiler would fire but it'd take a while for the radiators to warm back up so you might find the temperature dropping down to 19, 18 degrees before the rods heated up so you get this big fluctuation in room temperature which is not very comfortable and it's not efficient and what the open therm is doing is it realises the room temperature is approaching a target temperature it will ramp the boiler right the way down and cool down the flow temperatures so we, we try and keep the room at a steady 21 rather than going up and down up and down I'm just going to go into the menu and just So we've got it set up as a combi boiler on open therm. And the supply temperature we've got at 65 degrees. Now the lower we get this supply temperature, the more efficient the boiler will be, the less heat we're wasting, the less heat that's going out of the flue. So ideally we will supply 65 degrees to the radiators and they'll lose about 20 degrees, come back to the boiler at about around about 45 degrees, which is ideal. Um, whereas traditionally the supply temperature would be about 80 degrees and it's very inefficient.